The fives game has been a class favorite every time I've uh, tried it or other teachers have tried it in, in their classrooms. And the way this works is that when you're doing the goal to evens section, you'll want to make a die for every two to four students that has just the even numbers on the sides of the die. So for instance, two, four, six, eight, and 10. I usually just use Unifix cubes and a dry erase marker. And that way, when we're done playing the evens game, when the students have become fluent with goal two evens, then we just erase the even numbers on the die and then rewrite them one, three, five, seven, nine, and maybe 11 uh, for the odd factors of five game that'll be coming up in a while. And so the way this game works is that when it's my turn, I roll the die, and in this case, the face that's facing upwards is the six. So I rolled a six, and so I'm gonna show with my snails six groups of five. And then I ask the students to say six groups of five is the same as three groups of 10 is 30. And then I get 30 points. Now, you're gonna see in the video clip just after this one that the classroom teacher in that classroom provides the students with sentence frames that really help support her language learners. And about half of her students are language learners in English, and about half of them are language learners in Spanish. Uh, she does happen to be teaching FactsWise in English with her fourth graders, but you can go either way. In addition to putting the sentence frames up on the board to support her language learners, she also requires the students to show their thinking with the manipulative and to use the wording from the sentence frame or something that they have then developed on their own that's very similar. And you'll notice that a little bit into this next video clip, one of the students is explaining her answer, but she forgets to use the manipulatives. And her partner reminds her that she isn't gonna get the points for that particular move. And then they switch places and her partner is taking her turn and she forgets to use the manipulatives. So they're both having quite a uh, laugh over that. And then they both remember from then on. Now, you can have the students record their points just on a piece of scratch paper, and then they can add them up later on. It's a good exercise in adding numbers up that are often going to go well beyond 100. And so for third and fourth graders, that's appropriate. One of the things that I noticed is that my students really like this game. And so they eventually wanted to play it at home. So I would check out a die for them and a snails page, and they would go home and play it with their parents or with a friend. Some of them got quite excited to share when they came back the next day how big a score they'd been able to accumulate while playing the game. And it became a little bit of a, let's, let's see who can get the largest number at home when they're playing. One of the great things about this game and all of the other FactsWise games is that once the students have learned how to play the game and you no longer really need to assist them in the basic directions, you'll be able to circulate the room maybe with one of those assessment charts that we talked about in goal one and keep an eye out for the students who are building very clear fluency and won't need one-on-one -on -one assessments 
and the students who are still relying on some kind of counting or skip counting, you probably won't need to do a one-on-one -on -one assessment with those students either because you know that they're not yet fluent. And then perhaps identify some students that you really do want to do the assessments with because you're not really sure what's going on. So this is a great opportunity for that. I hope you and your students really enjoy these games. Uh, this one, as I said, turned out to be quite a class favorite.